We're going to move on now to our second literary prophet, and this is the prophet Hosea. He was a native of the Northern Kingdom. So Amos and Hosea, you're going to associate with the Assyrian crisis, and they are prophets of the Northern Kingdom of Israel. He's prophesying in the time of Jeroboam II. Jeroboam reigned until about 747. Okay, And then he continues to the last king who is confusingly named Hosea. So he prophesies in the 740s, 30s, 20s, somewhere in there. He doesn't seem to have seen the fall of Israel, though. Now, Hosea is considered by many to be the most difficult of the prophetic books. The Hebrew is very difficult, and it sometimes seems rather garbled. It's very hard to render it intelligibly. But structurally, we can divide the book into two main sections. Chapters 1 to 3 have a certain coherence to them, and then chapters 4 through 14. 1 to 3 tells of the prophet's marriage to a promiscuous woman named Gomer. Um, this is, uh, his marriage is a metaphor for Israel's relationship with God. And these chapters also contain an indictment or a lawsuit. Remember this reeve form, lawsuit form. We're going to see it both in Hosea and Amos, uh, Isaiah today. Then chapters 4 through 14 contain oracles primarily. Oracles against the nations, but also against the kingdom of Israel. We're going to be focusing primarily on chapters 1 to 3, since these are so distinctive to Hosea, and we'll refer occasionally to some of the other chapters where they might pronounce an important theme for Hosea. So again, the historical background for the book of Hosea is the Assyrian threat. The Assyrians are wiping out a number of the smaller states in the ancient Near East, the middle of the 8th century, and Israel obviously could not be far behind. And the line that was taken by Hosea was to condemn the attempts that were made by various kings, by Israel's kings, to withstand defeat or to avoid defeat at the hands of Assyria. If Assyria was going to conquer Israel, Hosea said, then it was God's just punishment. And to fight against it, to fight against the inevitable, was simply another kind of rejection of God, another rejection of his plans and purpose. It demonstrated a lack of trust or faith in the power of God. Hosea 10, verse 13, spells out the disastrous consequences of trusting in human power or foreign alliances rather than trusting in God. And this is a theme that we'll see occurring again and again. Hosea 10, 13. You have plowed wickedness, you have reaped iniquity, and you shall eat the fruits of treachery, because you relied on your way, on your host of warriors. He was suggesting inaction. Now that surely would have been viewed by the king and the court as against all reason. But this was Hosea's insistence. Israel was faced with a choice. Who, in whom should she place her trust? In God or in human leaders and their armies? Hosea 1.7 goes so far as to suggest that actually the moment of decision has passed for the northern kingdom. There's still some hope for the southern kingdom, but the northern kingdom has obviously made its choice and it was the wrong choice. Hosea says that God says, I will no longer accept the house of Israel or pardon them, but I will accept the house of Judah, and I will give them victory through the Lord their God. Right? Victory through the Lord their God. I will not give them victory with bow and sword and battle by horses and riders. Right? If you think that's what gives you victory, you're mistaken. Some see that verse as perhaps a later interpolation into Hosea has such a positive assessment of the southern kingdom. But there is this sense of impending disaster that resonates throughout the book of Hosea. Chapter 8, verse 7, they sow wind and they shall reap whirlwind, standing stalks devoid of ears and yielding no flower. If they do yield any, strangers shall devour it. Israel is bewildered. So the catastrophe is unavoidable. And Hosea has often been described as, as painting a portrait of unrelieved gloom. It's very grim. He seems to hold out no real hope for Israel. She has to pay the price for her infidelity to God.